I mean, at least it's here, right? That's pretty good. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil, the Glacial Geek. Uh, I'm coming to you here from Glacial Geek Studios, where my stuff has finally arrived, so that's at least one step closer to getting them to where we usually are, uh, but not all set up, so no painting yet today, but hopefully it'll be coming soon. That's the plan, soon, hopefully to get through all of this and get it all set up and ready to go. Um, so yeah, so thank you for your patience with all of that. I know it's uh, there have been very few thin coats going on in the last couple of months, but I mean, uh, it took eight weeks for our stuff to finally get here. Or eight weeks from when we left it, you know, when it, we left our, our, our place in Anchorage to when it finally got here, eight weeks, so. Uh, yeah, it was a long time. So, and I think it was like another week or two before that I wasn't able to do it because we were in the process of packing everything. So, um, so you guys have been very patient and I appreciate that with all the different locations that I've had to shoot these in. Um, I also wanted to thank you all for all of the support that you guys have been giving me in the channel. Um, but both and everything from just watching the videos to the comments that you make, uh, to the, the kind messages that you send, everything. It means a lot. It really means a lot that we can do that. Um, that, that you guys, uh, appreciate what it is that I do. And I, I appreciate that you appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and I want to thank especially all of my patrons who have, uh, really, just blown my mind by how much you guys really want to support this channel. It's been pretty incredible. Uh, we've been developing a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool conversations going on over at the uh, the Discord channel with the patrons. So um, if you want to join in on that conversation, it's really cool. It's one of the benefits of joining and becoming a patron of of the Glacial Geek. Uh, so you can go over to I'll have a link down below where you guys can go and check out and uh, and and join and become a patron of the channel. And I really appreciate that. Um, so. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a crazy couple weeks uh, with both jumping around, going different places, filming all over the place, meeting really cool people that I've always wanted to meet. Um, you know, people that I've considered idols that I've uh, like looked up to in, in in forming the channel, and just getting to meet them and 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 make that a reality has been incredible. So uh, it's been a been pretty pretty crazy couple weeks, and uh, I, I imagine it's probably only going to get crazier. <laughs> Hopefully a little more settled. Hopefully I'll be here in Anchorage for uh, not Anchorage, whoo, Savannah for a little bit longer than I have been previously. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've, I've really appreciated all the support, and I um, it's been fun. It's been good stuff. So uh, so on to the topic for today's uh, deep thoughts are how to make a battle report. I figured. I was sitting and I was trying to figure out what to do and I know a lot of people have asked questions about what it is, how, how I go about making a battle report and I wanted to help you guys do the same. Um, because, you know, I, I had to learn myself, make it, you know, make do with what I had to do and there were some lessons that I learned the hard way as I was going along that I think can probably, hopefully, if I can, if you can figure it out beforehand, might help. So, um, so yeah, how do you make a battle report? So the first thing is that you have to figure out what kind of battle report that you, all right, my dog is, there we go. <laughs> um, so we need to figure out what kind of battle report you wanna do. There's a couple different kinds. There's uh, the kind that I do, which are more of a dice rolling one. So those end up being about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, a little less, depending upon the size of the armies and uh, how, you know, how close the match is. Um, then you have the basically like the stream kind of like the, the twitch stream form of battle report where you just kind of film the whole thing and just let it go and those things end up being about three four hours because basically just watching two people play a game um, like they do on, on the Warhammer TV or in other other channels also do that kind of stream where you have like an overhead camera to show it uh, mod rules their their battle reports are like that uh, so if you want to go check out those ones and the other one is a turn-based. So those are the three primary ones. Turn-based, which is where you just give a overview of what happened during the turn, um, point out interesting things that happened, but you basically do all the game mechanics happen off camera, and you just, in between turns, they just show kind of what happened, where people moved, what shot at what, what attacked what, the results of all of that. Um, those are the, 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 the three main kinds. Some people do mixes of some. I know Striking Scorpion does a lot of his mechanics off camera, but then it'll show like the interesting dice rolls. Um, I know that um, 
I know that uh, uh, Winter's SEO does more of the turn based, but he, he's been doing more dice rolling in his uh, videos. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, it, it just depends upon, honestly, the best way to go about it is which kind do you like to watch? And those are the ones that you're gonna wanna make. So when I first started moving my channel, I realized that I enjoyed watching the dice rolls. I found it interesting, I found it exciting. Uh, not knowing what's going to happen and being there, it, it, it amped the, 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 the fun for me when I watched a battle report that had the dice rolls involved. So I knew when I was starting out, I wanted to do dice rolling mechanics. So I wanted to show the dice rolls. Um, so once you figure out kind of what you want to do, I chose the dice rolls, you then have to figure out how you want to go about doing it. This is all happening before you even start the first game. This is all before you've started anything. Um, this is even before you even pick up a camera. These are all thoughts that you need to have and figure out for yourself before you get into the process of making battle reports so that you know what you're gonna do once you do start. So once you've figured out which ones you wanna do, then figure out what it is that you enjoy about battle reports, you know? If you watch, uh, do you enjoy competitive games? So do you like watching like what Frontline Gaming kinda do, does or Tabletop Tactics where they've got tournament style lists that are, you know, very hard lists, you know, hardcore looking for the win. Um, they have a lot of fun doing it, but that's, you know, this is, that's, this is not whack play, you know, win at all costs. This is just the style of list that you're looking at. You know, do you enjoy watching two lists that could, that you could possibly run into at LVO playing it out together? Uh, or do you prefer a more narrative base where it's, you know, uh, maybe, you know, you make a story up and you, and the, 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 maybe the people make the story up and then they make it happen on the tabletop. So maybe reenacting famous battles through the, the, the in the fluff or making up your own fluff and just having like a campaign. Maybe that's more your style. Um, either which way, you need to figure out what kind of battles you enjoy watching because those are going to be the ones that you're going to be playing because you, if you're making the battle report, you're playing it. So you're going to want to enjoy playing it. So if you enjoy doing tournament lists, then do a more competitive style battle report. You know, there's plenty of people out there that want to see that. Um, if you enjoy doing narrative games, then just do narrative style ones and emphasize the story. You know, that's important. It's important to do what you enjoy because if you don't enjoy doing it, you're not going to keep doing it. Um, so now you've come up with what you want to do. So uh, for me, I like a mix of competitive and narrative. I always like throwing in a narrative story with my games, um, as anyone who's watched my battle reports knows. It just adds something to to the games for me. So I don't just want to have like, oh, these are my plastic spacemen fighting off against your plastic spacemen. Let's roll some dice. I like to have a story behind it. You know, there's a reason that I went through the process and the time and effort to paint them. It's not just to look cool. It's because I want them to be cool. <laughs> you know, I want them. To, I want there to be more than just little plastic, little plastic toys. I want them to be part of a story. You know, and that's why I go through the effort of painting. In my opinion, that's what I like to do. So I like to have a battle in front of me, not just a game. So uh, I like putting in the narrative. I like putting, I like, but I like mixing up the list from hardcore to, to more soft and fluffy friendly lists. It, it, I enjoy doing both kind of games, so I enjoy being able to play it out that way. So yeah, so that's what I like to do. That's what, the way I like to play it. And then you have to decide how you like to play it. Do you care about the story? If you don't, don't worry about it. Don't bother with it. If you really like the story, maybe you have two videos that you put out each time. One with a story time talking about the the history and the battle that's about to occur, and then the one with the actual battle report itself. You know, Mini Wargaming does that with a lot of their uh, with a lot of their campaigns. We'll have a story time, and then they'll have the game, which is cool. It's really interesting. It, it's entertaining. And if that's what you like to do, then do it. You know, but think about it and figure out if that's what you want to do. Uh, know that the second one is going to take more time because you're going to have to film a second video that you're gonna to have to put together and edit and put out there. So these all have to be thoughts that you have to have that this is what you wanna do. So now you've decided on the, the style of battle report that you're gonna do, the kind of battles that you're gonna have, now you can start thinking about how you're gonna film it, you know? Um, I would suggest doing only painted armies. I know it can be tough uh, to keep up with that and maybe you use some of the same units over and over again in your first battles as you start to build up your army but people, it's not as much fun to look at unpainted armies. 
You know, it's one thing to play with unpainted armies. I've got no problem with that, playing against unpainted armies or playing with an unpainted army if I'm going to go into a tournament because you're involved in the game. You have you have something that you're you're a part of to be there and you can have fun doing it. You know what I mean? So you're part of the game. You're actually part of what's happening and it's a blast. You know, you're having fun doing the game. You're you're involved. But if you're just a spectator, you don't want to just look at Grey Horde against Grey Horde. It's boring. It becomes old and you just I, I don't know. I noticed when I was watching battle reports, I had a tendency to to click off of those ones faster than ones that had fully painted armies because it's more interesting to watch a painted army. So I decided that when I wanted to do my battle reports, I wanted them to be fully painted. And if that's not a big deal to you, then don't worry about it. You know, that's just my opinion. That's what I like to do. If you look at, you know, if you look at a lot of the, the, the bigger channels, they have painted armies and that's what they run because of that same thing. The fact is when you're making a battle report, you're not just playing a game, you're making a, uh, a, a, you're making an a piece of entertainment for someone else, not just you, for someone else, you know? Um, and you have to understand that they're gonna wanna have to watch it, and those kind of considerations have to go into the creation of them in order for them to be, you know, worth your time effort doing, you know? If you just wanna make videos for yourself and share them with your friends, fine, doesn't make a difference, you know? You can do whatever you want, but if you wanna make battle reports, if you want to put them out there, you want to make a YouTube channel, then you need to consider your audience. You need to consider what they're going to want to see. So you've got the idea, you know what you want to do. Now you need to figure out how you want to make your own twist. You know, part of my twist was that I like showing the armies close up one unit by unit in the beginning so that you can get an idea, you can see what the armies are. You know, I'm playing fully painted armies. I want to see them and I think other people want to see them. So that's what I do. I also decided I don't like showing movement because it got boring to me watching movement. Um, so I only wanted the dice rolls. That was the exciting part because that's the part that you don't know what's going to happen. So I showed an overview of what happened during the movement and then all the dice rolls. And you can decide how you want to tweak it yourself. So if you want to do dice rolls, but you know maybe certain dice rolls are boring to you and you could just do those off camera faster and quicker without having to worry about it, go for it. Do what you think is going to be more interesting and what's going to create a more dynamic video for you and your audience to have. Um, so this whole time you've just been considering how and what it is that you're going to be producing, not even just the actual producing of it. So now that this has happened, you now have to actually film a battle report. And to do that, you need some kind of camera. Uh, you don't need an expensive camera. You don't need a really big fancy camera. Uh, you can just use your cell phone. There are plenty of videos out there that just use the cell phone. I think Winters SEO used his cell phone for the longest time. If even if not still now, I don't know. I don't know if he's moved on to other cameras, but for a long time, I think he used uh, his cell phone. I know a lot of people use their cell phone. The cameras in your cell phones are really good now. They have HD quality, you know. And most of these videos are going to be watched on a computer screen or a cell phone or something. So you don't need 4K ultra dynamic. 3D filming for a battle report. That's just beyond what people are going to be watching. So you don't need to produce it. So so get your camera, whatever it's gonna be. I use a Sony Handycam, um, the AX33, the FDR AX33. Um, it's the one I picked up. I used to shoot with a Canon 7D, which was a DSLR, but it was manual focus and it's heavier and it requires you to pay more attention to it to get a better quality shot. So I moved on to a dedicated video camera for that reason, because it made it easier on me and my life filming. And I film a lot of them, so it was worth it for me to do. Um, so now that you've got a camera that you're gonna use, now you need to think about audio. Are you just filming this with your friend inside your house, in your garage, or in your gaming room, whatever it is? At that point, audio is not as big an issue. You know, many wargaming guys, they use uh, microphones to film like their intros and different things, voiceovers and things like that. But during the game, they just use the camera, the on-camera microphone because they film in studios that are quiet, they're insulated, they don't have to worry about the sound quality at that point because it's purely what's happening inside that room. And there's not any, there's no extraneous sounds that are going on. There's not a lot, you're not filming inside of a store at that point. So you can use the, ca the, the microphone on camera. But if you're filming in a game store, like I always do, uh, then you have to worry about audio because in a big, loud games room, 
you're going to have extraneous sound that's going to be going on. You're going to have a lot of people playing games outside of the game you're playing. You're going to have other customers coming in, talk, people uh, talking and laughing and whatnot. If you just use the microphone on the camera, it picks up all of that. And it's going to be too loud and obnoxious for you to be able to have any kind of quality audio. And if there's bad audio, people are going to click off of your video. Bad audio is the biggest determinant if people are going to stick and watch it. They can deal with bad video, they can be, deal with bad lighting, but they just can't deal with bad audio. Bad audio makes a video impossible to watch. So you need to you need to you need to concentrate on making sure that your audio is quality for this. So if you are going to be shooting in a store, you're going to be shooting somewhere where there's a, a bit of a background noise, there's going to be a louder noise, then consider getting an external microphone. Um, I just use a shotgun microphone that I got from Best Buy. Um, that what I do is on my camera on the hot shoe when I put it on, I face it towards me. It's usually supposed to be like right now it's faced uh, towards the front of the camera so they can pick up my voice since I'm in front of the camera. But because I'm behind the camera most of the time when I'm doing that, I just uh, I face it towards me and therefore it picks up my audio and only my audio as much as possible. You'll still get some background noise, but it fades into the background. As you can see in my battle reports. Granted, I'm a loud person, <laughs> which helps with that, but uh, having it facing towards me means that it's directed at my voice and that's what it's picking up and it'll figure out the levels for that from my voice so that it's mostly just picking up what I'm saying and not what's going on on the table next to me or at the register across the, across the store. It'll concentrate the audio on what I'm saying and it has a higher quality audio at that point. Um, also, the microphones that you buy for external, the external microphones, they're going to be a higher quality than the ones that you're going to get on the camera. Um, so if you even just want to up the quality of your audio, you can get an external. So even if you're shooting in your, you know, in your friend's garage, you can get an external microphone. You don't have to get, you know, you don't have to go out right off the bat and buy a thousand dollar Sennheiser set, um, you know, wireless microphone. You don't have to do that right off the bat. Mine, I think, was less than 50 bucks. You know, and it works or about 50 bucks and it works well. It does it, you know, you can, you're listening to this right now so you can hear what the quality is. Um, and you need to make sure that you're, you're keeping up the quality of what's going on with the audio because otherwise people are going to click off of what you're doing. Um, so now you've got that. Now you've got, you've got the camera, you've got the audio figured out. Now you need to go and film it and understand that people are going to be watching this to be entertained, you know? So if you sit there and you're just, drone on about this and you don't say much about what's going on or you don't describe what's going on in the roles, they're not next to you. They don't know what's going on. They need you to describe and have an ongoing commentary of what's happening in order to stay engaged in the battle, to understand what's happening. Um, so you need to work on your camera presence. You need to work on the way you describe things. Make it entertaining. Make it understandable. Make it so that somebody watching that you don't know wants to keep watching. And that's what I do, you know? That's why, I, that's why I throw in the woos, that's why I throw in the womp womp and the yus, you know? Like all of that is designed to make it a more entertaining watch. It's to make it more entertaining for the viewer. And that becomes part of what it is that you do. You know, these aren't, you're, the people aren't just gonna be watching these to see what happens in that battle. You know what I mean? Because you can play the same battle with the same army 30 times and you're gonna have a different result every time. So they're not just watching this to see what exactly would happen between these two armies. That's part of the entertainment, but they're watching this to be entertained. They're watching this to either pass the time while they're painting, they're watching this to because they're sitting at home and just wanna watch something, like a, like a TV show. You know, they wanna watch this. It's sort of like a nerdier version of a football game. You know? <laughs> They want to see what's happening. They want to experience the situation, and they, you know, there's 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 part of that um, vicarious nature of it, so that they can sit back and it's almost like they're playing the game. So keep that in mind when you're when you're filming. You know what I mean? A little bit of banter helps. Too much banter might distract. You know what I mean? But keep keep it in mind. You know, don't push it too hard. Make it flow normally. So you and your friends going back and forth while you're playing a game, probably talk back and forth and joke. Do that. Have that go on in there. You know what I mean? Make that part of the video because that's fun. That's entertaining. That's what people want to see and that's what people want to do. 
So work on that. Work on what you want to do, you know? And you have to understand that people are watching this to be entertained. They're not watching this to watch you get salty because your army isn't doing what it should do. You know what I mean? If you've rolled your 30,000th one in a row, so what? Get over it. You know what I mean? You're not here to win the game. You're here to make a fun video for people to watch. And you're, you're here to make something entertaining. And people don't want to see you get grumpy because grumpy is not fun to watch. You know, unless it's, no, it's just not fun to watch, especially not in a battle report. They don't want to see that. They want to see you have fun because that's what this is about. It's a game and they want to have fun and they want to see you have fun. So if you're losing really bad, suck it up. Keep laughing, keep having fun, play it out and don't just give up because people don't want to, aren't going to come back to watch another video if you gave up turn two because your one tank blew up and you didn't think that you could pull it out. They don't care about that. They want to see you try. They want to see what you can do once your tank blows up. You know what I mean? If you want to give up and your friends are just playing in the garage, that's fine. You can do that. But if you're making a battle report, it's got to be played through until it's absolutely impossible to win. You know what I mean? So like I'm saying, like if you're playing for the relic and you've only got one like drop pod across the board away from the relic, you can't win it. At that point, you can call it. And at that point, you've probably played a long game and it's if you're almost tabled at that point. So just remember that you're there to have fun and remember that you're there to entertain people. So keep the salt to a minimum, keep the grumpiness to a minimum, keep the pouting to a minimum, just have fun, you know? Keep laughing, make it entertaining, and that's the best way to make a, a good video. You know what I mean? If you look at all the good ones, you know, they all have people who are having fun. You know, tabletop tactics guys are always laughing and having fun. The guys in Mini Wargaming are laughing and having fun. Winter's SEO is having fun. It's You have to have fun. If you're not having fun, then it's not worth doing. You know what I mean? And if you can't put that aside, then, you know, consider maybe something else. Because at that point, people aren't going to want to watch a video of someone getting grumpy because their dice rolls went bad. Or because something, or their opponent's dice rolls went good. You know, either which way, people don't want you to get salty. They just want you to be keep playing and have fun. You know, that's what this is about. Um, so once you've got the video, once you've got that done and you've recorded something that you think is good, now you need to edit it. Uh, I think there's a lot of free editing presses. I use Adobe Premiere, which is not free, um, but I'm a professional photographer, videographer on the side. So uh, that's why I have the uh, the equipment that I do and the, and the software that I do, which helps, but it's not necessary. There are a lot of people out there who aren't professional videographers and photographers who do these kind of things. So you need to just go out there and find the process. I know if you have a Mac, then iMovie is basically just a pared down Final Cut Pro and it will do everything you need to make a good video. You can just put the pieces together. And if you do most of your editing in camera, like doing clips, so if you're doing a dice roll, you just one clip after the other, you can just drag them in there, maybe put in some transitions if you want. I don't like to put transitions and then just export it and suddenly you have a video, you know? I throw in the fill faces, it creates a little bit more editing on my part, but it's become something fun that you can do. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of what it comes down to. It's just put the editing, then put it out there, get the YouTube channel up, start uploading, and then promote it. Just put it out there. Every time you put out a video, go onto a Facebook group and share it. That's what I do, you know? I still do that, you know? All this time later, I still do that. Every time I put up a video, I go and share it in a different Facebook group so that people can see it. And then as people, more people see it, they start spreading it to other people. And as you start building an audience, it becomes bigger and bigger and starts to grow. So, but those first couple times, you know, it's gonna be you and your friends watching it. You know, there might have three views, you and, you know, you, your mom, and your mom again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you have to understand that that's what's gonna happen. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, I've gotten what I've gotten after two years of working on it. You know, many Wargaming guys have been doing this for 10 years. Um, you know, it takes time. You need to grow an audience before you can really start. You need to grow an audience before you can grow an audience because as you get bigger and bigger, it starts feeding on itself and it becomes bigger and bigger. And the way that the algorithm works in YouTube for recommendations and stuff is the more popular something is, the more it recommends it, which makes it more popular. So it feeds in on itself a lot, uh, and they try to put out new new videos and stuff like that. So you you know it could happen, but you just need to be sure that you're going to be hitting the pavement. So share it on Facebook groups, share it in uh, on on website forums, anything. Just put it out there. Share it with your friends. 
share it with your friends' friends, you know, ask friends to share it, whatever it takes, just make sure you pound the pavement and get it out there so that people can see what it is that you've produced. Otherwise, at that point, you're just, you're, you know, you're, if you don't want to promote it, you're not, you know, you don't, it's, what's the point of doing it, you know? And that doesn't mean you have to pay for promotion. You know, you don't have to pay for boosted posts. You don't have to pay for advertising somewhere. That's, you know, save your money for buying better equipment. Save your money for buying more models so you can put on a more varied battle report. You know, whatever it is, just make sure you, 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 you replace, if, you, if you're not gonna be spending the money on it, then put in the sweat equity. You know, put in the groundwork, put on the posts, share it, push it out there, reply to comments, answer, develop a community, and be there. You know what I mean? Be engaged. And if you be, if you are engaged, you're going to grow a, a community and you're going to grow a following and that's how it works. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of hard work. And if you're trying to make this happen, then you need to be consistent. So if you're going to put out a battle report once a week, make sure you put out a battle report once a week. Don't put out a battle report this week, then two weeks later, then three weeks later, and then two this week, and then three weeks later, put out two and then another month later you put out one. That's not how you develop an audience. The way you develop an audience is consistency. So I put out three videos a week and you can guarantee that you're gonna see three videos a week. And that's what develops the audience because they come back to see those three videos a week. If you're putting out one video a week, they'll come back to watch that one video a week. But just make sure that you are putting out that one video a week. Otherwise, they're not gonna to wanna to come back. And they're not just, or they might wanna come back and they're just not going to because they're not gonna develop that community. They're not gonna develop that system where they, you know, where they know that on Wednesdays your video is coming out. You know, if they know Wednesdays your video is coming out, they'll come back to watch it on Wednesdays, you know? And if starting out that you can't really commit to even doing one video a week, put it out once every two weeks, you know? And let people know that. Say like, you know, I'm gonna be putting out a video every two weeks. So before you start releasing it out there, make sure you have a couple backed up. So if something comes up and you're not able to edit a video that week, you've got one in the bag that you've already got done. Or you can't shoot or someone cancels on you. You've got them in the bag and you've got it backed up. That's what I did when I went, you know, I knew when I was going on the move that I wasn't going to be able to shoot for a long time. So I busted my butt and I had, you know, a ton of videos filmed from Anchorage that I started to release as I'd already started moving because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to film while I was traveling. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to film necessarily right away when I got here. And it turns out that a hurricane came along and kept me from filming even longer. So the process, luckily I had all those backed up videos that I had in, in, you know, in reserves because I knew that that's what you had to do. So you need to build up a reserve, you need to build up, build up a backflow so that you know if things come up, if you have to go somewhere, work, family, obligations, whatever gets in the way, that you don't leave your audience hanging. Because if your audience gets left hanging too many times, they're just, they know that they're not a priority. And the audience needs to be a priority, you know? They don't have to be your only priority, they don't have to be your top priority, but they have to be a priority. So that they, that you give them kind of what they can expect, which is the videos that you agree to put out there. So, I hope all of this has been helpful. I hope it kind of gives you some understanding of what's going on. Uh, know that you're not going to be making a lot of money off of this anytime soon. I mean, I still don't make a lot of money off of it. And I've been doing this for two years and I have a Patreon going that I've got some very, you know, which helps to support the channel, but it's, you know, I wouldn't be able to live off of this alone if that was the case, you know? And that's kind of the thing is that if you're in this just for the money, I would try to find a different way to make money, you know? Um, but if you're in this because you want to contribute to the community, and you wanna make something big and you wanna do something like that, then yeah, this is, this is what to do, you know? I love it, I love making battle reports, I love putting in the work, but it's a lot of work, you know? I've had a lot of nights that I've been up till three o'clock in the morning, you know, exporting a video so that I can have it uploaded in time for people to see it the next day, you know? It's, it's long days of waking up at nine, going to work, coming home from work, grabbing my stuff right away, going out to the, to the gaming store, filming a battle report, coming home, editing a battle report, uploading it, or export, you know, going through rendering it, exporting it, and then at 3 a.m. setting it up to upload, go to sleep, wake up at seven to go to work at nine the next day and rinse and repeat. And you keep busting your butt and keep making it happen, you know? And you, you, you have to commit a lot of time. Understand that you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be putting a lot of your free time into this if this is what you want to do it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of effort 
And I mean, I don't play games just for fun anymore. I record basically every game that I play that's not a tournament because I need to, to keep up with my schedule, you know? So understand that that's kind of what happens is that if you want this to be something bigger, then you commit to it and you make it happen. If you want to just have fun with your friends and put out a video every two weeks or every three weeks or whatever you want to do, yeah, do it. That's totally easy. You can keep up with that. No, no problem at all. You know, if you want it to be something bigger, you want to develop an audience, you want to develop a community, then it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of commitment to make it happen. So, um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys got some understanding of what it takes to make a battle report. You know, talk to me below about your experiences making battle reports, whether you've got, you know, what, some ideas in mind that you had or you've got some ideas that you've tried or whatever it is, talk to me down below. Or if you have questions about anything, you know, ask them down below and I'll, 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 I'll help it. Cause I love the, the conversations that we get into, especially with the deep thoughts. It makes people think deep <laughs> and we've had some really cool conversations with the community. So I really think you guys are a fantastic community. I want to keep that building and growing. So let's keep working together and making it happen. So anyway, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope I certainly did. And I hope it became, I hope it was, uh, it was knowledgeable. I hope you guys learned something and I hope to keep doing that. So um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, have fun.